Ah. I don't want to bring anybody out tonight. I, I got a few jokes to lay on you. I, I will bring out my first guest. I thought if you, should the monologue not have gone well, I was just going to not bring him out all evening and let you suffer. But you were so wonderful. I'll let you see him. By the way, the other man I introduced as director earlier was his, his producer, but that's just one of those little mistakes when you've been away. My next guest is acting and directing, and, and um, he's all over town, it seems. It was it, movie theaters. He's one of the busiest, most um, appealing, nicest, best-liked men in our business. He has two films in release right now. One is with his wife, Joanne Woodward, and their daughter in uh, The Effects of Gamma Rays on Man in the Moon Marigolds, highly acclaimed. And he stars now in The Life and Times of Judge Roy Bean, and he directs and acts, and I mentioned all that. The man, it, someone said the man that when men look at him on the screen, they would like to be him, and women would like to be with him. Isn't that funny? Here's Paul Newman. I thought that was excessive, actually. <laughs> Very nice. To... Well, my wife says I snore, so, so... I don't know why I would uh, generate that. You mean you're much. not perfect? Uh, oh, good Lord. Everybody always thinks film actors are, are perfect and don't snore. Things like that. Say, the question everybody's always wanted to ask you is, why do you go on with that kisser when plastic surgery would do so much good for you? <laughs> I don't know what it is. No English flu, eh? Uh, no. Oh, yeah. Hey, that, by the way, this is wood, eh? People were, were not... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sound like what? <laughs> People were knocking on Bakelite for years it's here tin. and having bad luck. It's tin or something. But uh, John Houston, I was afraid you'd get it from him since you've been working. No, I, it's really lethal. I mean... I guess when it hits you, it knocks you flat. Yeah. I have a history of getting the flu, but it goes for me in about four hours. You really? Yeah. Well, you're, you're a sweater. Yeah. I mean, you... Uh, no, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> No, I mean, you... you a turtleneck or what? <laughs> you're a cardigan. No, you go to the... You, uh, you steam yourself. Uh, I know. Did, did you have a sauna or a yes, steam bath? Yes, I, I am an addict. I am a sauna bath addict. Hooked on steam, eh? I'm hooked on steam. Yeah. And it's really quite marvelous because uh, it's a place where I can get away every morning and run through the New York Times yeah. and uh, be very quiet and serene and not be bothered. You wouldn't fall asleep in there, though. That's a danger. Yeah. No, we have a technique. We, we chop holes in the ice in the river that runs in the back of our, and we just jump in the water. You do? Yes. Like but, the old Indians, doing a sweat lodge and then going into the, into the water? Yeah. But you can't fall asleep in the steam room, can you? That, I mean, I've heard of this, and it's very... Not thick. if you drink a lot of beer. <laughs> uh, something keeps waking you, eh? Yes. <laughs> I've also discovered that if you have, have posters of, of uh, hotshot automobiles and uh, lovely ladies, Mm -hmm. In the steam room, it's very difficult to go to sleep. You put automobiles ahead of ladies in your life, eh? In the steam room, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, was, uh, you were serious once about uh, racing, weren't you? Or isn't it just something, you, something you've always wanted to do? Actual racing. Well, I did a uh, motion picture about racing, and uh, yeah. I must say I, I fell in love with it. If I could, if I could race competitively, uh, in automobiles, I would give up acting, directing, the theater, and motion right? pictures uh, so quickly. I started racing in, in club races uh, last year. Yeah. And I have to say that uh, to win your first race at the age of 47 is delicious. 47? Don't they, aren't they terrified, though, the movie companies, when you race because they, you know, you're insured whenever you make a movie and all, in case you get a scratch or something. Well, I must say that's their problem. Yeah. They also don't like me to go skiing, and I can remember when we were in Switzerland, and uh, I had three or four days off from the movie, and I had my skis there. And I was determined not to go skiing because I realized that it would be terribly costly financially if I yeah. took a very bad spill. But I was not able to, uh, to withstand the pressure 
So I finally did go skiing and uh, got a frantic phone call from the production manager saying, we understand that you've been on skis today. And I said, that's absolutely right, but don't worry about a thing. I'm only skiing on one ski because I know I can't afford to break both legs. <laughs> <laughs> he pictured you teetering on one leg. But that would be, I mean, if they were making a movie and you went out and smashed up a car and they were Newman marred in drag race or something, they would probably, or marred in drag, they would even get more. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, right, right. Ah, right. oh, we're back. Mm -hmm. I've never asked you a lot of things that I probably won't ever ask you. But I, I was thinking, I've asked a lot of film actresses, is this myth about the casting couch true? And I just thought it would be weird. Have you ever been chased around a casting couch? Uh, chased around an office by a producer? Or no, I think there must be something the matter with me. Yeah? Uh, I've heard some very funny stories about that, most of which you can't tell on. Yeah. The FCC would object very strenuously, I'm afraid. Let alone the people involved. Let alone the people involved, yes. Probably right, yeah. Yeah. I don't think that goes on very much I, I, yeah. anymore. Yeah. I think uh, uh, it, it's very possible that the girls chase the producers around now. What? Probably. Boy, yes. that really laid there like a lemon. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that's not hostility. They're considering it. I see, okay. <laughs> They'll attack you later as you try, ah. to, as you try to leave. I heard a fascinating breakdown one time of uh, when a script is written in Hollywood, it goes to certain people first, and then when they're through with it, it goes to certain other people. I remember they said, any script, automatically, if there's a leading man, goes to Newman, and then it may be, then it'll go to McQueen, and, uh, and now uh, Redford, and um, I don't know what the hierarchy is, but it must change from year to year, and that must be uh, strange on the guy. I mean, does he go out and get a facelift suddenly or something? Or? Is, that, is there such a thing? Is, is there an order of scripts go to? Well, oh, I, I think there, there can be a pecking order. I, it, it just seems to me as though that the, that the audience's tastes are so whimsical now and so capricious, really, and mm -hmm. so are the critics, that it's... Uh, I certainly don't pay very much attention to uh, my position on that that list, it, yeah. it, it fluctuates so much. It just depends if you make a... What's it based on? Last pictures? Box versus office. Versus box office, exactly. That's all. Yeah. That's it, all. Sure. You, well, that you could turn in a, a, what I would think would be a, a very acceptable performance in a picture that didn't do well, and uh, that doesn't help you at all. Yeah. It doesn't help you get new scripts, which is... Uh, or good scripts, really. Yeah. Very mysterious, because then you hear later that somebody who was a big hit in the film, was the fifth person who saw it, the script, and everybody else turned it down. And very mysterious. All, it's really funnier when, when, the, uh, when the studios turn down the script. Oh, yeah. And somebody picks it up. And, uh, and then it's a giant one, success. Yes, one yeah. studio had enough sense to do it. And people are so happy when that happens always. There's so much goodwill in the business. It's amazing. <laughs> what, there's a, let's take a look at part of Judge Roy Bean. I, didn't, I haven't seen it yet. Can you stand me for not having seen it? And can sure. you forgive this? Because I had to see Marigolds over the weekend, another movie, which is really, well, you ought to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you about it in a minute. But tell us about Judge Roy Bean. And, uh, there's a bear in the movie, I know that. Judge Roy Bean, well, uh, it's, I, I don't want to get academic about this, but we have a tendency in this country to make legends out of a great many characters. Uh, Custer being, I suppose, the most uh, uh, hero worshipped over yeah. the years, who was a real uh, bum, I guess you'd call him. Billy the Kid was a... Oh, you're gonna get letters on that. 14th rate. Uh, gunman who was getting really like seventh billing in the New York Times yeah and uh, was glorified by Pat Garrett and the New York Times finally and uh, Roy Bean is uh, is uh, something of an example of that I mean we make f they become fairy tales really and that's what we try to tell with Bean uh, which is a an adult fairy tale and it's, t it's taken as that as as a over glamorized version or over romanticized or over mythified or something sure yeah yeah the longest hate letter i ever got on the history of this show was about saying a slurring remark about custer once by the way because there are two legends for custer one that he was a hero and one that he was an ass and you seem to subscribe to the uh, ass theory 
<laughs> Take a little look at the film right now. We're rolling. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll all think about that. Well, there's no way to top it. No, I tell you. We better just roll the movie. <laughs> Here it is. <clears throat> How did you get the voice so loud? Look at the voice. Gee, that's, if they ever remake The Life of Caruso, you've got it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do a single of that. We'll, we'll be right back. We have to take a pause.